the Bible, Plato, and the Atomic Age. Universal Center for Renovation presents Historical and Biblical Israelites. This video is strictly for educational purposes and commentary. And this video is of biblical and secular historical literature. So enjoy. A photograph on display at the Bradbury Science Museum shows the first thermonuclear test on October 31st, 1952. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Shortly after, the first nuclear test in October 31st, 1952. This was a statement made by a remorseful J. Robert Oppenheimer, the father of the atomic bomb. See, it is I who created the blacksmith who fans the coals into flame and forges a weapon fit for its work. And it is I who have created the destroyer to wreak havoc. Isaiah chapter 54, verse 16, NIV. What J. Robert Oppenheimer Fell to realize he was part of a long line of scientists, physicists, who, since before the time of the classical Greeks, theorized about the making of such a weapon. What Robert Oppenheimer did was took ideas from ancient physicists and scientists and took their theories and put together a team of modern day physicists and scientists and made their theories and applied science. And this is their history. The Bible, Plato, and the atomic age. This is about a plan, an ancient plan, inspired by the Heavenly Father to give ancient man and modern man knowledge, knowledge on how creation or matter is formed and how to break apart matter, which will cause a chain reaction that would release energy, unlimited energy that can either destroy men or or to Elevate man, kind, onto another level where all their energy needs are met. All their wars would cease. The material needs could be met. The cities could be lit without need of a labor class, without the need of tapping. The earth resources. What road did mankind travel down? The road to hill 
or the road to destroy. The Bible, Plato, and the Atomic Age. In our last video, we learned from the complete works of Josephus, a first century Israelite historian. We recall Josephus' statement of the first man, Adams, his prediction that the world would be destroyed twice, once by water, which happened, Noah's flood, and the second time there will be another cataclysmic event by force of fire. So obviously, this was part of the plans of the Heavenly Father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob from the beginning, because he allowed Abraham to foretell of this event. So his children, Adam's children, would know their fate thousands of years ahead of time. In our days, this event seems possible because we live in the atomic age, an age of weapons, of fire, that can lay waste continents and cities. In the last episode, we also read the opinions of an insider, Fletcher Prouty, and his interesting book, The Secret Team, that reveals the war planning of government on the highest level and their views and vision of the future. From his information, he concluded that World War Three would be a nuclear war. But there was a plan for post nuclear war global society and in such a plan the war planners came to the conclusion that there must be safe pockets or areas that would not be devastated in World War Three. green zones areas where Man, kind, can rebuild after certain parts of the world would be devastated by atomic warfare, fire. Also, in the last episode, we learned from Fletcher Prouty's book, The Secret Team, that there exists a group known to him as the Power Elite. And they were concerned with rebuilding a devastated world because this group called in his book a network that is ancient and worldwide. They would initiate World War Three. And they also planned to survive this war. This group possesses great wealth. And this plan has been in motion for a long time. So they have constructed secret underground bases and bunkers around the globe. And they are prepared to survive such a cataclysmic event as 
thermonuclear war. They see themselves as the survivors of this event. Just as Noah and his family survived the flood. So this ancient network, this power elite, they possess ancient technology. The power elite have access to exotic knowledge. This is how the splitting of the atom or the idea of nuclear warfare was made possible. But this is an ancient plan because knowledge of matter was given to the ancient nations or the wise men of the ancient nations, but they only theorized. They didn't have the resources to make this an applied science. In the last video, we learned that Plato's, the classical Greek Plato's knowledge of particle physics was extensive. Him and his school on the coast of Turkey, they had knowledge into subatomic particles. They knew about the atom, electron, protons, neutrons, nucleus, quarks. They had knowledge into this science. But the question is, how would ancient or classical Greeks, how would they know these things that only modern men seem to have been able to understand? It's because this is an ancient science. And if taught properly, this would throw the idea of evolution out the window. So this, these ideas are taught, but they are suppressed. The real meaning, the real knowledge of what these men possessed was kept hidden. But Oppenheimer and his team knew that this was an ancient knowledge. The Germans knew that this was an ancient knowledge. The Russians knew. People of India and China knew of this science of Understanding matter and physics of what creation was made of, the substance, the essence of matter, and how to break it apart like Lego, and how to put it back together like Lego blocks. To once more quote from the book Integrative. Problem solving in a time of decadence. And a quote from this book gives us some insight into what Plato and the ancient and classical Greeks knew. And these ideas came from the time of the people after the flood. So the ancient Israelites, as we will soon see, knew of this knowledge also, they were the most gifted in understanding these matters. The quote, it turned out that Plato's pure forms, forms is the name that these people in a classical Greek period called subatomic particles. Those unseen things, because you cannot see them with your naked eyes. The, these or those unseen things that gave rise to everything else 
particles were made out of subatomic particles, a surreal collection of electrons, neutrinos, gluons, and quarks of all directions. So Plato called subatomic particles forms. And as we soon shall see, Hebrews was regarded as the people of Plato's origin and of many of the so-called Greeks of his school. And the knowledge of forms was from the Hebrews, as we shall soon find out. That's why the Bible is so important in this subject matter. In the Bible, or the collection of books of the Hebrew, right from the beginning, deep physics, particle physics, construction of matter, is taught to the Hebrew reader. But in this, in this case, we're learning from English. Blue Letter Bible, The Creation, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Verse 2. And the earth was without form. This word form in the Hebrew is where Plato received his theory of forms or the idea of the subatomic particle world where matter or where all matter is created or molded from. Without form, in the modern Hebrew of Ben Yehuda that was invented in the modern time and is the spoken language of the state of Israel today, the word is pronounced to whole form. I won't get into this word yet and explain its significance, but that is coming up. But the word means forms, micro world, subatomic particles. This is in the book of Genesis, form, and the modern Hebrew of Ben Yehuda. To who? To grasp an understanding of what the ancient or classical Greeks called forms, what we know today as subatomic particles. Let's look at the article, Theory of Forms from Wikipedia. The theory of forms, theory of ideas, platonic idealism or platonic realism. This is a philosophical theory of metaphysics developed by the classical Greek philosopher Plato. He got it from an older idea or source. But the theory suggests that the physical world is not as real or true as forms as particle physics. Absolute or these Particles are absolute and unchangeable. Essence of all things. Forms. In his school, it was taught that forms are the essence of all things. Or subatomic particles are the essence of all things. In other words, everything that we physically see are made of atoms. So... These things that we actually see, rather it's a chair or a table or a book, they're actually made up of atoms. And this is what Plato called forms. And the Apostle Paul, in his letters, gave the churches that he established certain advice second corinthians chapter 13 verse 1 
this is the third time that I am presenting you. Every fact shall be sustained and confirmed by the testimony of two or three witnesses of the Amplified Bible. So it's necessary to provide some more facts to back up these statements that are being made. So to keep this short and brief, we can quote two sources. The first source would be Plato's Philosophy of Science by Andrew Gregory. Concerning Plato's theory of forms and his insight or his school's insight into the world of forms or subatomic particles. I don't want to get sidetracked. I just want to get straight to the point. So I'm going to try to make this brief and simple. The significance of geometrical atomism. It's the author quotes or writes. I shall finish this chapter with some more general comments on the historical significance of Plato's geometrical atomism. Because this was a school that the classical Greeks taught where they believed in the existence of atoms. I will agree with Vlastos or Gregory Vlastos. He was a philosopher, a historian who really was into understanding Plato and Socrates. I would agree with Vlastos that one of the finest legacies left by the Greek atomist tradition or the Greek school of thought that taught about atoms. And I include Plato and some of the physiologoi. Physiologoi is a Greek word for physicist. These guys were the scientists in the classical Greek period, including Plato. And I include Plato and some of the physiologoi in this is the development of two level theories. The idea that there is a micro world beyond our perception. So the classical Greeks, including Plato, taught that there existed a micro world or a world of subatomic particles. A micro world beyond our perception. We cannot see atoms. We cannot with the negative eye, we cannot hear atoms. So there exists a micro world beyond our perception. The classical Greeks knew this information. This is because mankind had knowledge into the creation of the world we live in, the creation of matter. It's in the book of Genesis, but the ancient pagan nations, they also knew of this knowledge as we shall see another source of information is from the book the god informs in plato by richard d moore this gets more straight to the point plato's theory of soul or his theory of subatomic particles subatomic particles are not direct objects of perception. We cannot see them with our eyes. So Plato's theory of forms is actually his theory of subatomic particles, which you cannot see with the naked eyes. So if it was Briefly explain that subatomic particles is what Plato and his school that was on the islands off of Turkey. Going to go into that soon. Subatomic particles are what they called forms or the micro world or subatomic particles. Forms are a micro world. Also, 
known as subatomic particles, including the atom. And this forms, or that word form, or that idea form, is found in the book of Genesis, the first chapter, concerning the formation of matter. So the atom was known to the classical Greeks, to the ancient Hebrew Israelites, to the ancient Babylonians, Assyrians, Chinese, Indians. So they had theorized about the atom and the possibilities of what would happen if the atom was split or cut. And this idea of splitting the atom is called nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is a reaction in which the nucleus of an atom splits into two or more smaller nuclei. The fission process often produces gamma photons and releases a very large amount of energy even by the energetic standards of radioactive decay. So when you split an atom or when an atom splits, a large amount of energy is released. And this is what these ancient and classical philosophers theorized about. But they did not have the resources to make this an applied science. It only was theory. Up until modern day times, nuclear fission produces energy for nuclear power and drives the explosion of nuclear weapons. Both uses are possible because certain substances called nuclear fuse undergo fusion when struck by fission neutrons and in turn emits neutrons when they break apart. This make a self-sustaining nuclear chain reaction possible, releasing energy at a control rate in a nuclear reactor or at a very rapid uncontrolled rate in a nuclear weapon. Utilizing the power of the atom has two sides. The first side, the positive side, unlimited energy. The negative side, nuclear weapons. The effect of the negative side of utilizing the atom was highlighted in the 2023 film Oppenheimer. The film Oppenheimer was an or a 2023 epic biographical thriller film about Robert or J. Robert Oppenheimer, the American theoretical physicist credited with being the father of the atomic bomb for his role in the Manhattan Project, the World War II undertaking that developed the first nuclear weapons. Oppenheimer has been called the father of the atomic bomb. In 1926, the 22 year old doctoral student, J. Robert Oppenheimer, grapples with anxiety and homesickness while studying experimental physics under Patrick Blackett, a 
at the Cavendish Laboratory in the University of Cambridge. Upset with Blackett's attitude, Oppenheimer leaves him a poisoned apple, but later retrieves it. Visiting scientist Neil Bohr advises Oppenheimer to study theoretical physics at the University of Göttingen instead. The Germans were years ahead of the rest of the world when it came to physics, especially since the German Enlightenment, which were headed by people like Moses Mendelssohn, who brought Hebrew literature to the German intellectual community. Oppenheimer completes his PhD there and meets at Göttingen and meets fellow scientist Isidore Isaac Rebbe. They later met theoretical physicist Warner Heisenberg in Switzerland, wanting to expand quantum physics research in the United States. Oppenheimer begins teaching at the University of California, Berkeley in the California Institute of Technology. In 1942, during World War II, U.S. Army Colonel Leslie Groves, director of the Manhattan Project, recruits Oppenheimer as director of the Los Alamos Laboratory, where the atomic bomb is to be developed. Oppenheimer fears the German nuclear research program led by Heisenberg might yield a fission bomb for the Nazis. When Oppenheimer wanted to expand the research into quantum physics in the United States, he was expanding the understanding of subatomic particles. Oppenheimer wanted to assemble the atomic weapon before the Germans. So he assembles a team. One of his members, by the name of Edward Teller, his calculations revealed an atomic detonation could trigger a catastrophic chain reaction that ignites the atmosphere. Later, President H.S. Truman, after the team assembles and constructs the weapon successfully, President Harry S. Truman orders the atomic bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in Japan, proving the complete prediction, the accuracy of Adam, the first man, the biblical Adam, Adam's prediction, the world destroyed by force of fire in the end of days.